What up, what up, what up, what up? I am getting the video going over here. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here cutting the coated cable for the, uh, the cast out five foot liters. And I was going, I was rocking and rolling, and then I realized I only had that many. <laughs> so I had to start it over. And that's what I'm doing right now. I got cable all over the floor right now, but I was about as stuck with the wait until I got this done. It would have been way too late to go live, so I figured I'd just chit-chat with y'all while I'm sitting here cutting all my cable, getting ready for it. Yeah, Timothy, Brandon, Ray, Edgar, Samuel, and four life. Hey, how's the fishing out there? Four life, did you get? Did y'all make it out there? You still rocking and rolling it? And Samuel, you were the one earlier talking about that other line, correct? That monofilament. Sounds like it's raining outside, but it's not. What's up, Robert? How you doing? Curtis, Amy. Mmm. Wagoneer. Where are you going to head to, Wagoneer? If you're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Curtis. <laughs> uh, see who's following who now, uh huh? <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely need to check it out because if they're making that, that stronger line like that, I'm definitely game for getting with them to see about going that route because for me, Tired of wasting lighters and time, you know, pre-rigging just to, to rig it up, man. We should be able to just slip it right through and not have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. I said here in hard life, man, that's why when we do food and stuff like that, you snooze, you lose. Everybody knows that. <laughs> What's up, Oscar? How you doing, boss? Mm, so, I got some emails out earlier. Waiting on some replies, but I probably got them out too late in the day, so... <laughs> oh man well you know they get so used to playing with egg boxes they forgot how to you know get with tackle boxes and stuff like that so for sure yep definitely can see that oh and are you already heading back up back to back home you only come in for the winter time <laughs> oh, I'm waiting for Curtis's response on this one. <laughs> Figure I'll cut all this coated cable up. It's just annoying. They don't spring back like it used to. Hmm. Oh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Very nice. 
kind of fishing you do out there? I'm actually cutting up a coat of cable, 250 pound test, and I'm cutting up four strands at a time with the cutters that I have. But once you get down to the end, you have to do it all the twist, so works out that way. But I always like to see how close I am to uh, cutting the last little bit to where it actually measures out to what I need it to be. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Literally, these are the two pieces I got to cut. That's all the waste I have from cutting. Watch. That's the waste. And this is the stack that I've already cut. I cut this whole stack of them. So, got a text over here. All right. Let me grab this other section of code cable real quick. Just so y'all get kind of an idea of what I'm doing. I already laid it all out across the floor. However, it, it was the last bit of the spool probably Already cut right here. Okay. So what we're going to do. So I got that section. I am hanging in there. How's everybody else doing? We're definitely looking for a lot more gear to put out. So. I'm going to create a loop and I hang it on something, but I'm normally in the other room. I have all the loops for my fishing rods and I use that, so. The only thing that annoys me, it gets all twisted up, even though you unspool it in the right direction, it gets that spin on there.
that helps a little bit. I think so. I'm just glad to, I got to go fishing the other day, for sure. It was uh, definitely a much needed break. Oh, later, Curtis. Um, should have did all of this before I went live, but it was trying to hurry up and get live. I'm not that far off on this. So, uh, tomorrow I'm sending you image. Okay, I pulled the uh, mono top dot for the mono portion from the shipment today as well for whiskey. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do both sections real quick. This one will be a little bit easier because I already got this one semi-organized. Move it over here so I can sit down and stage it so I'm not all over the place again. section what I'm going to try to do is really cut a whole bunch of this coat of cable up in one time so y'all saw me do one one section of it 
uh, pull some of this over here. This I can do. This one you can tell it's already got a whole bunch of twists in it. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, see all those loops in there? Well, as I start straightening it out, it creates twists in the line. So as I'm trying to straighten it, maybe I got to undo all of that. And that's what sucks. So, <laughs> so since he didn't want to touch the bait, were you pretty much fishing by yourself? I mean, why didn't he even want to catch an alligator car if he didn't want to touch bait? <laughs> Actually, he had a, a, a gentleman come by earlier today, and uh, he's he like, so what kind of fishing do you all do? And I was like, we do everything except uh, fly fishing and a bunch of lure fishing. And he goes, well, that's pretty much all I do. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, <laughs> I was uh, telling him about the YouTube channel and stuff. He's like, but also check it out. And so, because him and his son do a lot of fishing. I was like, well, that's good, yeah. Putting it out there like that is awesome. So, got about halfway through it, except I got to make these even, because if I don't make them even, when I go to start cutting or divvying up the ends, what I'm trying to do is make this four, so I'm going to pull all this, get through the middle of that one, and then split it in half, so. Ah, so I'm trying to go back and forth. I don't have machines that do it for me, I do it all myself, so. Glad I did that because I can already tell where it would have been a pain, but up here. Yeah. Only about another hundred more feet. I'll be done here in a minute. Uh, no, I've not fished for big catfish in other states. I want to, though. I definitely do, because I want, I want to get some of those big old, you know, 60-pounders, 80-pounders, 100-pounders. I mean, I want to go to other countries and catch those big old cats, like the Wells cat and stuff like that. Definitely want to. Just because now I know I don't have to deal with the, you know, a fin that uh, uh, will jab you, you know what I mean? That was something that I never knew about until I finally caught my own and learn that you know what i mean but i did learn too that uh catfish do on their their lips you know they got that those pads and those they, they'll mess you up man they really will oh there it goes at the middle now, to see how close I am at the very end. Damn it. Yeah, send it over, Alfredo. Definitely ready for dinner. I like Crocs, but I hate working in Crocs. 
with the mono because it always catches that little lip on there and you literally have to force it out of there. So. I was kind of getting a little frustrated with it because normally it's not supposed to have all this twist in it. Like when I unravel it the way I do here, I'm supposed to just line it up and start pulling on it. But because the company, whoever's pulled it on there, they must have pulled it off sideways and it, it does make it for a pain of foot. I think I got further, far enough down that I can move over and create another pile so it can work. sit back down oh man let's see all right guys so who's all new to my channel that doesn't know about my tackle shop mm. damn it so there's big fish already in. Good deal. Oh, sweet. Okay. That'll be cool. Well, Julian, what I have to do with Crocs is I wear socks with them. And yes, that's not the way they were designed or supposed to be, you know, but I wear socks with them. Completely comfortable that way. I don't have to worry about um, getting blisters or anything like that. So you might want to try that. Now, I have noticed that I still have to, you know, do extra treatment with them, you know, like washing your shoes kind of deal. Especially when I'm always out there and fishing with them and all kinds of blood and guts get in them and stuff like that. Yeah. There we go. Well, if we can get some more thumbs up, that'll be that'll be sweet. Tell me I left the cookies over there. Yes, I did. It's gotta be that's what it is, something right there. Just catch it. Buffalo Joe inserted sheepskin lined hunting Uggs. Damn. You got to send some pictures of those then. <laughs> I got to check those out. And are you talking about knee highs or thigh highs? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hmm. Can't do crocs not allowed in this town. <laughs> you know what? For the longest time, for the longest, I mean, it's probably only a few years now, I used to always wear boots, like always, always wear boots, but I think a lot of it had to do with, I, I stopped wanting to mess with them when I started having all the hip problems and stuff, but now that I got all that fixed, I just haven't gone back to go get me some more boots to start wearing. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Well, that'll definitely, that's definitely going to put the highlight of getting more people into shark fishing and stuff like that, too. So, yeah. And especially now with all these pups out there, there's some big sharks. There's definitely big shark out there.
Dude, I was wearing, I was wearing boots and shorts. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah. See, that's what I keep telling everybody too. When you get into fishing, it's not the fish that you see and lose that haunts you. It's the fish that you never see is the one that haunts you. Because there's so many different variables of what it could have been and what you could have did differently to to get it to turn or hopefully it would have turned and like there's so much on there so great dad yes yes Ooh, on the 20th that's right you sent me the email about that and i believe i talked about it but i don't i didn't verify the date uh, i need to check over here make sure that's on a saturday Okay. Make sure I don't have. Okay. That's gonna be sweet. So, um, Dre Dad on here, guys, is Andres's father. He's the one, the young boxer that's now in college, that we raised some money for to help him with his sponsorship. Uh, he's actually gonna be talking. So, Dre, if you want to share some more information of where they can go and stuff like that for the guys. They can make it into town that week. Um, would be awesome. Oh, it'll be at the well. Who, isn't there two YMCA's here, or is it just one? Damn it! All right. The one close to downtown? Okay. Um, is it free entry or will we have to pay to get in to, to see this? And what, what's he going to be talking about? Well, bigger and bigger sharks are starting to come out a lot more. So, yes, it is now, you know, a lot more people are pushing for the T-Rex models of the 80s. The way they can roll with higher test lines. So that way they can have the chance of stopping them. Because if an 80 wide two-speed couldn't do it, that's going to be crazy. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, the... Uh, like I said, I've, I've done 12 footers with my 80 whites, no worries. I mean, real easy, easy money on it. But again, too, you know, there's a lot bigger sharks coming into our waters. And it's evident with the, uh, the great white that was here, you know, not even, what, a month ago? So, yeah. Damn it. So how far is that ledge when you drop bait like that? How far, like, is it a, a rocky ledge or is it just a, a gradual decline or, or a speedy decline with sand covered? <laughs> well, it's actually at 68 degrees in here. But uh, because I was running back and forth and, you know, trying to get this cable sorted and set up so that way I could do this video. And again, I'm going to see how close I was to, to this. And even then, too, like this short end here, I know I can use it on the, uh, the three-way shorts. We have a three-way long, and then we also have a three-way short, so... Yep. So even once I fold it over, see. Once I fold it over and make two two short drops, I'm not gonna lose much. I'm gonna so yeah. Definitely golden with that. Yeah, let's see. 
Dang it. I was caught by the George went for my baby steps to reset. That is, that's going to be so awesome. Um, actually, maybe I can get a wife to set it up so we can take the kids over there because um, I was talking to the kids about it and stuff like that, and they were talking about how hard things are and this and that, and I'm like, y'all just got to knuckle down and get it done. Like, you can't let the, the hardships bring you down, I said, especially now as kids. Like, if you let it do it now, you'll always think you can you can be defeated I said, but if you, if you can knuckle down and, and make it happen now as kids, you always know that no matter what obstacle you, you've come up against, well, you'll be able to over, over, overcome it. And I brought up about, you know, how your son was doing that, and, and now he's already graduated college and all of that, or graduated high school. But they were talking about high school, how hard it's going to be, and this and that. I said, man, that's not an excuse. Like, you're creating the excuse. I said, don't create an excuse and you won't have nothing to fall back on. You just keep rocking forward and take it down for sure. So oh, awesome. I'll definitely have to go over there for sure. See, maybe the, the, the team can all go. Or uh, everybody from the, the channel, too. So that'll be sweet. I'll definitely be talking about it more. Uh, yeah, what, two weeks from now? Basically, next weekend. Not next weekend, but the following weekend, sorry. So. I'm actually placing another order for more team shirts. So, team guys, if you all want more shirts, let me know so that way I can place a order together um, and get them in as quickly as possible. So, especially since we did get new members in, and we were trying, we were trying to do it as a surprise, but she she found out. She's smart. She's smart. <laughs> Atlas, nice. Well. Chapo. Yep, nice. I, I, we actually went to, uh, I went to high school with a buddy of mine. We used to call him Chapo. I don't know if we spelled it the same. I don't think I ever spelled his, his nickname, but yeah. Uh, he was the center for the Moody Varsity uh, football team. Good buddy, too, man. Real, real good buddy. So. Uh, Actually, they are starting to kick them up, uh, whiskey. Uh, the schools, the middle schools, they're starting to put together fishing teams now and stuff like that, trying to get kids out there. And um, I actually talked to um, the coach over here for Moody High School, and I told him, man, tell the kids they come by. We definitely can hook them up, you know, with, with big time discounts and stuff like that um, to get them fishing and stuff. But now that we got all these donations coming through, they ain't going to pay for, uh, it would be a while before they pay for anything because we've got Curtis, we've got a bunch of other guys that are donating gear and tackle. So now when they come in, they will leave with fishing tackle and stuff. So definitely, definitely going to be a big bonus and stuff. I talked to them before all these uh, uh, fishing tackle giveaways were actually happening and stuff like that. So I'm definitely, definitely game for it. Just, well, it's an excuse to hang out with your buddies, but man, shoot, to also get get some teamwork in there and stuff like that, it's even better. What's up, Roger? Oh, you on night shift, bro? How's the new job? Are you already at the new job? Uh, Bray to monofilament, if, well, if I'm here at the shop, I'll do a hollow core splice. If not, then I can do a Bimini to a Worm, and then, or I can do an Albright. It just, it, it all depends how we're going to be fishing it. If we're going to be casting, I definitely want to do a Bimini loop on it because it doubles up the braid. Um, 
when it's coming off the reel and stuff like that because the uh, the braid creates its own arc as it comes out and it will actually cause backlashes from when the mono uh, hits that first guy behind the braid and it no normally knocks the knock it not out. So I just need more information if like or are you just using it for top shots or like throwing small lures or even big lures? Um, or are you talking about an actual mono top shot where you need a lot more mono on the length of this stuff? So. An FG is strong, but there's also certain applications of when it actually doesn't help. Um, all knots will end up breaking right at it. Well, let me let me finish this, and I'll, I'll better explain it to you. Give me just a second. Just trying to get this off of here. This is something we actually discovered multiple years back with the team gear, and this is when we were dealing with a lot of mono top shots because we were still needing mono at that time because we were rolling a lot of uh, solid braid but it, it was something that I stumbled upon because I was at a uh, Nick's shop and he was talking about how um, to compensate for casting with braid they actually had to invert the uh, first guide on the fishing rod so that way it would guide the line back onto the cast when they would cast out I don't know if y'all saw that video, but it's been a while, and let's see. Nope, not bad. the last little piece and that's all the cable I cut right now while I was sitting here in front of y'all alright um, okay so when when you cast out your, your line starts parallel to your rod well, you'll see when we cast, a line bows out like this. Well, as it's coming up and over like this, it hits that first guide, and then it straightens out and goes up the rod. However, that arc is from monofilament. Now, when you go from mono to braid, it creates a secondary arc right there. And that's why you always break off at that knot, because this arc will get through, but the braid is so far behind it, it breaks it off, and that's why you have a lot of break-offs right at that first guide when you're tying monofilament for, the, like, distance cast when you're hitting 100 yards. When you're do, trying to do that 100-yard cast, you're going to you're gonna break off a lot like that, and that was something that we ran into, and it was something that Nick was talking about, that uh, that's why they flipped the guide over to force that line to come back around, and then I was like, well, that's not really going to help the guys that have old school rods that are upgrading their gear if their guide, you know, the two feet are on the bottom instead of the two feet on top. Uh, actually, yes, I got a rod over here. Like this one right here. They designed this this guide like this upside down. And there's the real seat right there. And this is for spinning. They designed the guide upside down like that. So that way as the mono and the braid come up and hit the guide, it forces it to come back around and go through the eyelet. Now, like I said, when Nick was showing me that video about that, it made me think, well, what if we can create some kind of bridge between the braid to the mono. 
So what I started doing was I was doing a bimini knot, and I would do it to where the loop was about two and a half to three foot. And we did the same cast with the regular guided rod, not one with the upgraded guide like that. And it worked. You could hear it hit, hit both of them and go, and we didn't have no more break-offs. So that's why I'm asking, how are you planning on throwing this? Um, because the Bimini, yeah, straight shot, you know, trolling, um, it coming off the rod, you know, on, on a fish and stuff like that, still won't be the speed of a cast. It's fast, but not a speed of a cast. And we, I get the um, prime example when I cast out, you know, five, five to seven seconds, you know, several hundred yards of line coming out. But on the spooler machine, it still takes like a minute. That's a fish, you know what I mean? And even if, if you caught a real fast one, it's coming straight off of there. It's not, it doesn't have this big old bow on it. So you don't have to worry about the, the knot that you tie your mono to your braid. So, you know, it, it will work that way. But if you're going to be casting with it and that knot's going to be coming through the guides, highly recommend a worm knot to a bimini twist on your braided side. And it works awesome. So... Yep, no doubt, no doubt. So, hmm. <laughs> no, there's there's quite a ba quite a few bass fishermen on here and stuff like that. And again, too, um, I know Jen with Champion Outdoors has been she's been fishing her butt off, tournament after tournament after tournament. You know, for bass fishing and stuff like that. So, it's definitely. It's definitely there you know she's she's ranking in numbers you know i think one of the last ones she was like at 37th place but it was out of like 200 anglers or something like that so she's in the top percent now for sure so and then uh, the leaders that i was building earlier i got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen 1920 21 22 23 24 25 26 and I only needed 25 so there we go mm. so are y'all are y'all just casting uh for life for your baits or what see that that's the deal that I want to uh, get set up bassin and she knows how to set it up that's why I haven't started the tournament on the channel is because I'm trying to get in communication with her, but she's she's turning and burning on all these tournaments and stuff like that. So, um, like commercial rockfish in Maryland, hook line, trash can. Well, um, me personally, if I'm rock fishing, I'm definitely not going to use any spinning rail because if I'm pulling up a lot of dead weight from the bottom. I'd rather be able to drop it down a gear and as the fish picks up speed or decides to run up, I can jump up to uh, top gear and rock and roll with it. Um, for me, I would do like an HX Raptor. That, that thing's beast. 50 pounds of drag. You can put on 100, 100 pound test line on there and just crank them fish to the surface. I actually put up an SX Raptor against a 9-knot, a pen 9-knot. And uh, I told the guy just to crank on it, you know, and he tried to crank on it. And I said, all right, I'm going to try the same thing. And I said, but I'm going to drop it down in low gear. So I dropped it down in low gear on the SX, and I started cranking, and I was pulling drag right off of his reel. And he's like, dude, that's impossible. I said, that's what we pay a lot of money for, is to make our lives easier when we're trying to move a lot of the dead weight. So, yeah. Um uh, Oh, dang, y'all still catching Gasper Goo at night? Every time we go over there, we once it gets dark, we'd stop fishing for Gasper Goo. I mean, you might get lucky and catch one, but we didn't. It wasn't like during the day. I think we caught like 15 during the day. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah, no doubt. Actually, on gag grouper, the only thing I can tell you is that I like reels with a lot of torque and a lot of drag. So that way, when we do hit those, um, my buddies that we would go for AJ or any kind of grouper, we would fish near the boat. 
And as soon as they would hook up, they would gun the boat forward so we'd lock the reel out so that way we could pull the fish out of the rig to make sure it didn't go in there and stuff like that. But if you were any kind of slow on it, you would definitely uh, definitely lose it to the rig because it would end up cutting you off. So, um, As for like where and how deep and all of that, that always changes because depending on which rig you're going to, normally I'll throw a big old big excuse me a big live bait if i'm gonna target them and to be honest i've yet to land one but all the all my buddies have landed one and stuff like that and that's the way they were doing it too so you know it's just been the bad luck of the draw for me you know on landing those big uh, big ones now aj's i have tore them up using live blue runners you know about 14 15 inches big 60 knot circle hook send it down and it's gone and normally we'd only drop down to like 150, 175 foot, and they were there. Nice. All right, I'm gonna run to the back real quick and go get my swivels. I thought I grabbed them earlier, but I guess I did not. I wanna at least start doing that portion so that way I can uh, uh, start putting these five foot leaders together because we got a crap load of them. I need to get done, and uh, I know when I'm on the road, I need to have enough work for them to be able to put things together and, and knock it out of the park. So, right back. All right, so the swivels I'll be using are the Bill Fisher 475s. They're stainless steel swivels, so that way I can put these together and know they ain't coming apart. Awesome, Basson. Thank you very much, Bob. Actually, uh, share your, your YouTube channel link here, so that way the guys here... Have can go and check you out as well, Mom. Or Bob. Oh, ooh, ooh, that would have sucked. Almost dropped like probably 300.8 millimeter uh, sleeves. I don't. I don't doubt that the speed wouldn't uh, would be an improve, improvement for sure. It's just once you do get that that dead weight on there, then it does make a, a huge difference on being able to move them out quickly. So. Uh, dang, that awesome! What happened to your boat, boss? Setting up all this gear, and I need to hurry up and get a get a count of what I need done as well. Detroit, what's up, boss? How you doing? I am sitting here about to make a whole bunch of cable sections for leaders for my cast out. I don't know how many I cut, but there's there's the bundle. <laughs> yeah. Probably good two inches thick. Yeah. Uh, good king creature. 
Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I used to love tearing up the Kings at Bob Hall Pier. And that was the beautiful thing about that pier. It wasn't just always just one corner. You could hit them on the back row. You can hit them up on the straightaway going out to the end of the pier. Like, there was so many places to catch kingfish on Bob Hall. It was awesome. Oh, you're 26, and actually, I haven't even given myself a thumbs up. I put it on my computer because uh, as I'm watching it, I can see a lot more of the comments. Because over here, I can only see three, you know, and depending on if, if it's a long comment, then I can only see like one or two. So, hmm. dang it. Let's see. Looking for MVP. Hmm. <clears throat> That's the bad thing about uh, saltwater fishing and boats, man. They just, if you are not familiar with that kind of deal, like for me, owning a boat, the only way I'll be able to own a boat is if I have people, yeah, I win the lottery. Yeah, it'd be the only way. Yeah, because I, I don't have the time, the effort, or the will, or the want to, you know, buy a boat and have to sit there and, and deal with all the... Because it doesn't matter. When you buy a new boat, it doesn't take long for things to start breaking down just because you're always exposing it to the saltwater environment. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what it means. Bust out another thousand. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm waiting to win the lotto. That way I don't have to worry about the bust out another thousand. I'll just make sure the guys have it up and running for when we want to go fishing, which will probably be much, pretty much be every day. <laughs> so. Well, the marketing is going great because through the YouTube channel, we've been putting together a lot of live video feeds. And now we're actually starting to get a lot more viewage from the videos that we're putting out there. Um, right now, I'm doubling up on my, my crimps right here. I'm using 1.3 double, double mini sleeves with 250-pound coated cable and the 475-pound stainless steel swivels. And what have we got going on here? Mm. 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 Excuse me. I'm telling you, as soon if I'm up and about, I'm fine. I, it's you know, I, I'm turning and burning. But as soon as I sit down, my body wants to go to sleep. Got to keep working and stuff. So. Um, Well, Aaron, how do you plan on fishing the 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 rod and reel combo? So I've seen guys using SX, MXL, LX, and he, I even saw a guy with like a 50 on a Mad Cat or an 80 on it. And I just, I'm sorry. That's, those rods don't have enough backbone for the type of reel that they're trying to put on there. Especially with those bigger ones and stuff like that, so... Oh, okay, so you really don't even have to cast far, so um, what are you trying to target? We do appreciate that, Detroit. Um, Detroit, on your channel, do you, uh, can you share the link here to... So that way other people can check you out and stuff like that. Mostly drum, like black drum or red drum. Luciano, how you doing? We are here. I'm putting together a coat of cable right there, so. There you go, billion. Yeah, we could set that up for sure. 
And the quicker you set it up, the better, because we're starting to get a lot more um, requests for the fishing rods and stuff like that. So it's coming. I can't read Isaacs either. <coughs> and most of the kids can't read it either. So we'll leave it be right there. We're wondering where Billy's at. Normally he's on the channel and stuff like that. So I'm wondering if... Uh, we gave him a little too much crap about the croaker deal. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Well, to, to be, be honest with you, the MXL Raptor would probably be the best reel to go with. The reason for it is because it will have enough line so that way you can break off a few times and be, keep being able to fish. But also still have enough line capacity so when you do hook a monster fish, you can pull it in. We've pulled in seven footers with our MXL Raptor, so it would it can happen. Kirsten, we are here, uh, and uh, <laughs> it couldn't it can't have been that much, man. No, uh, no. Actually, I talked to him earlier today. He was supposed to be working on finding out some more information about that shark bait and stuff like that. So I am. Okay, so I spent the first part of the video cutting up uh, the coated cable. I was making them into the designated sec section links that I needed for my deal. But also, too, I've got the, the two bags out of the box there. Uh, and I had to peel the labels off because where you put the labels or the tape across it, it actually peeled them off. So I had to um, peel them off the tape to get them on there so I knew which one was which. And let me tape that on there so I don't lose it later on or tomorrow. There we go. Well, so, yeah, this is going to be interesting because once uh, I know I got. No, I don't. I think I have one of your reels. Not a double check, but they're, they're coming in, so be cool well uh, I remember the name so you're, you're good to go on that uh, <laughs> how big was a lizard fish first off <laughs> mm. oh yeah yeah well, with the Namixel Raptor, we were fishing the beach, and we, we brought in a seven-foot, I think it was like a seven-and-a-half-foot spinner, and that's because we ran it out with the kayak. <laughs> now, I, 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 like I said, I, I figured he would be in here, you know, so he can lock on to, the, um, to their comments and stuff like that, because we obviously we don't understand what they're saying. Um, There you go. Yeah. No, I don't. Uh, we would have to order the clicker uh, replacements for them, Abbott, and stuff like that. But to tell you the truth, most of the time we just send them in because if we're going to do the clicker, we'll have them replace everything on them. The clicker, drag washer, bearings, and stuff like that. So... That way it's a one-stop shop, you know what I mean? And it, it'll still be a lot cheaper than having anybody else here um, working on it. So I would highly recommend going that route, bro. Uh, my guy, daughter's guy, to the upper. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Okay, so where is that river at? Because I can't even, I don't even want to attempt the name because I'm probably going to murder it. <laughs> I don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pennsylvania.
See, and that, that's the thing, KTM, you know, for the guys that are getting in debate and wanting to sell it, at times it could be great. But a lot of times, too, it makes it really difficult for the tackle shops because what ends up happening is there's so many bait guys out there competing and then they drive down the cost because they're competing with each other on selling bait. Well, when they sell bait cheaper than what we can sell here, then it's useless to us because why am I going to buy bait from them and sit on it because I'll never be able to sell it because everybody's going directly to them. So that's where, you know, I, I have a problem with too many bait people out there at that time because, you know, they come in once in a blue moon to look for bait. And, you know, I can sell it every now and again, but it ain't to where I could turn a profit every week. It, it's crazy. Like, I remember one time I bought, um, shoot, I bought, what was it, like 125 counos. Well, at the same time I bought those counos, thinking I was going to turn a, a quick profit, you know, to obviously buy more, you know, that you, you spend money to make money. You don't spend money to, to have it sitting there just burning a hole in your pocket because you can't sell it. You know, and the, the longer the gear sits in, you know, in the shelf or on, on in the freezer, especially in the freezer, every day that it's sitting in there, it's costing me money to be able to sell it. So when it happens like that, and those guys are they're out every day just flooding the market, there's nothing left over for me to buy it or to sell into. Like, uh, I bought in all this, this bait, and it took me almost... Actually, I didn't even get to sell it all. I took a, I took a, a hit on it because when I sold whatever I could during the tournament, they had already flooded the market with so much that I only had like 10 people come through for bait instead of 50 people. And because I didn't get all the bait sold, when the freezer crashed on me, I ended up losing over 1,000 pounds of bait. So it, 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 it killed me. Like, that was a major, major hit. But again, you know, all these... Um, bait dealers that are out there it is crazy like it sucks you know it, it does hmm. yep no i mean see my deal is if the guys that have licenses to sell bait would only sell to the tackle shops we'd be golden it, it, would, it would be a a market to where you know we're working hand in hand they're they're creating the the uh, the need for bait because they're not selling directly to the end user they're selling to a middleman which will then turn around and sell it to them which will turn around and i'll be out then i have to buy more and i'll be able to buy in bulk you know i'll be able to buy 50 to 100 pieces at a time or you know a thousand pounds or three thousand pounds of bait whereas you know when the general public you might sell, you know, a couple hundred pounds of bait in a weekend or whatever, but you do it every single weekend or every other day, then there's no reason for me to buy a whole lot of bait because the market is flooded. Everybody will have bait. So that, that's my only problem with that. I wish they would make, you know, I'm all for people, you know, trying to make money and stuff like that. But, you know, that's where I have to draw the line because I got stuck like that twice. And I was like, dude, that's expensive. It, it, it really is. So, And or they have to sell it cheap enough to me so that I can compete with them. You know what I mean? That, that then at the end of the day, they don't want to they don't want to sell to me because why? Because um, I need us. I need a better price than what they were originally offering, because if I pay the same price as everybody else on the finished product, then why are they going to come to me and pay more? So, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. We trust me. I, I used to love going out there and catching my own bait because then I'd have to worry about it. Like it was fine, you know. We couldn't compete with those guys. But once I stopped being able to get out there all the time to go catch bait because of everything I had to do here at the shop, it it, it really bites into it. You know. So here's the first bag of thirty six. Already done. That's one bag of thirty six. I'm gonna keep them separated so that way at the end of the night I can figure out how many I've got going, so. Yep, 
Yeah, there, there's a few different ones, too. Um, KTM, you do have to be careful on which one you buy. Um, because some of them, they're very specific. It'll be like the one where you can only sell out of your vehicle. And when you have your vehicle, you have to have it marked, you know, bait and stuff like that. And it, it does, there's a bunch of stipulations. So definitely, definitely watch it. So. <laughs> Well, the kingfish you won't be able to sell because that's a pelagic fish or a game fish, and you cannot sell game fish. <laughs> wow. Oh, and here, here's, I got one even for you, too. Y'all have to buy a bait license. I have to buy a bait license. Sitting right there. That, that, Big long one, that's my bait dealer license right there. The other one is an older one, but that was the newer one right there. So, yeah, it, it is. And then to buy that one for me is like 200, I think it was 215 or $225 for it. So I have to spend that after I already spent money on buying bait or whatever and stuff like that. So, and actually, before you, before you store any kind of bait, you better make sure to have that license because they will come in and if you have any kind of sales of the bait before you have the license, they, they will they will ticket you and confiscate it. And then they'll go sell it to a cheaper fisherman and then charge you the amount that they made on top of it. So they make double. So, yeah. Yep, yep. <clears throat> Pelagic means deep water fish, like open open. Open water, open offshore, anything uh, like mako sharks, are offshore fish, deep water fish, uh, AJs, amberjacks, snapper, those are all what they consider pelagic fish and stuff like that. Yeah, I would double. Really double check which fish you're allowed to sell, because as far as I know, that's going to be the other thing. Like um, to sell perch, um, there's another one. Like you have to have a specific license for certain baits and stuff. I know with like um, black drum, flounder, and sheephead, you have to have a special fin fish license for that. To sell crab, you have to have a special license for that. Um, years ago when I went over there thinking that I could catch my own crab and sell it, I went out and I spent, you know, hundreds of dollars on nets and this and that and rope and marking everything and, uh, you know, hundreds of hours out there putting out um, traps and checking them. And and then after maybe two weeks of selling crab, the game wardens walked in and I showed them the license. They're like, no, that's not it. And I'm like, well, that's what they gave me over there. Like, told them exactly what I was going to be doing and how I was going to be doing it and and yeah, I learned I learned the hard way that they, I was I received the wrong information. So definitely make sure that you talk to a game warden about which one you need and what you're going to be doing and stuff like that, so you don't get get in any trouble later on and stuff like that. So well, this was at the wildlife department where I bought my my license from. One of the ladies there told me, oh, that one's the one you need to be able to do that. And actually, I found out from the game wardens that it was not. Like, there's a specific license for that. So, still be careful. Um, I know there's a... I forgot what the deal is on it, but there's a group that... And actually, too, I need to file my... And even because I have the, the license... Every month, I have to file a report telling them how much bait I bought from whoever I bought it from. And if I don't buy bait, I still have to file that I didn't buy any bait or whatever every month. Like, it's like, God, it's worse than taxes. Literally, it is. So, And that's what gets me more, too. It's like an individual who, buy, who goes out and catches bait or whatever and sells me a whole bunch of stingrays. I have to report for them, like, how many stingrays they bought when they bought them, what they're both like, I'm like, dude, that's not my, like, why do I have to report all of that to them? 
of who I bought it from when it's their license. Like they're the ones that paid for that license. Why do I have to do all the grunt work to be able to buy bait from them? I should just, hey, I bought bait. That's how much I bought. That's it. Like from whoever I bought it from. I shouldn't have to like research all that information and double check. And I mean, obviously, you know, I'm going to check for the license, make sure it's good to go. But on that, like, why should I have to report in every, every month on it? And that sucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, see, I tried to sell carp. I mean, I, I got a bunch of carp in one time. And then that was the last time I got it in. After that, I went and caught some myself, but it, it it was so hard to find them and get them and stuff like that. And even now, it's even harder. Like even the guys that I know that normally catch carp all the time, they're like they, we can't even get it themselves. Like they're having really hard times to get it. So, um, yes, sir. Basically, that's what it boils, that's what it boils down to, Marco. Like they want us to devote all this time to help them do their jobs, and I'm like, dude, like I have the license for me to be able to sell. Like, why do I have to report in everything that whoever I bought it from? And like, they're all just it's a checks and balances, and I'm like, checks of what? Like, it won't be a month later till you go and find out whoever sold whatever they sold me, or. You know, there's no limit on them. Well, we need to know. I said, like, well, have them report that to you. Like, I'm tired of having to do their job for them, you know? So, it, it's really annoying. It really is. But then, you know, all the guys who come and buy bait want to haggle us for the price and haggle us for this. It's like, like, dude, like, <laughs> we all only knew all the stuff we have to do just to get the bait in here. It's not like, oh, it just magically appears and we're trying to make a profit on it. <laughs> I wish that was the case. Then it'd be a lot cheaper. <laughs> it it is it, everything we do. It's some kind of hoop and red tape and everything we got to go through to make it happen. And I tell you what, if I don't have that two hundred something dollars at the beginning of the season to buy that, I won't sell any bait just because I don't have the money to do that. And even then, too, you know they'll. Hey, are you going to sell bait? Like, no, I can't even afford to. Like, I got no bait in the freezers. I can't even get none in or whatever. And so I'll, I'll, there was times that I would actually go several months without selling bait because I just couldn't get any in. So why buy into a, a license? And that's the thing, too. It's from, it's from It expires on the same date, whether you buy in at the beginning of the month or beginning of the year or halfway through the year. It's still the same price. I'm like, dude, I don't understand that, man. Yeah. Well, I can remember when we, we would buy Bonita for like five to ten bucks. And we, we used to buy the piss out of them. Like, we used to buy a lot of them. And then we'd sell them, you know, if we bought them for five, we bought them for ten. Because we had to drive over there to go pick them up. And then, two, like I said, running a freezer, you know, every month to freeze when fresh bait comes in like that, it, it lags the, the electricity. So it takes a lot of electricity to freeze them, especially if they're raw or unfrozen. When they were frozen, bringing them back in here and open them and restocking them and stuff like that, we'd always see a spike in the amount of electricity. And then, too, like, okay, so we sell, you know, we bought 50 of them. And it takes us, you know, two months, three months to get them unloaded. Well, all the profit that we would have made if we would have, if we would have bought them that weekend, sold them that weekend, they would have made profit. But buying them and sitting on them and sitting on them and sitting on them, two months later, you know, paying two hundred dollars a month on the uh, the light bill just for, to run the freezers, well, that goes any kind of profit we would have made. So a lot of people don't understand that when they're coming up with and buying bait, they think that you know we're killing them. We're like, hey, we're just trying to break even. <laughs> to tell you the truth, we're just trying to break even. But you have a lot of guys sit there and bash us, saying our prices are are crazy expensive and this and that. And then we actually put it out there and compare them, compare our prices to other prices that are out there. And they're like, well, you know, and they create excuses for them. Well, they're the last spot. They're a lot closer. And this. I'm like, 
You know, it's like, dude, you can never make these guys happy. So just stop worrying about them. But again, too, like I said, I'm not, I'm not against guys trying to make a living, but we need to work together to make it that, you know, they continue coming to me to buy the bait because why am I going to buy it from the dealer to be undercut by the dealer or, you know, not have any way to make any profit off of it. So, yeah. And how many rockfish a day do you do you catch and or clean? See, and that's the thing with these. They don't even have to clean them. Like, they bring them whole to us. Like, we don't want them cut. We don't need them filleted. It's just catch them and bring them to us. The only thing that we ask is help us bag them. So when we do put them in the freezer, they're not sticking to each other. They're not one huge block of ice or of meat. They're actually, you know, bagged up and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, no, and it, it's not really them. It's the everybody around them when they post up, oh, we got bait from here. And these guys, you know, just, just hating on hating on guys trying to make a living, you know what I mean? And then, you know, if we don't go in there and put corrections on their statements, then people will really believe that they got overcharged or this and that. And, uh, and we, it's happened like that. A guy came in. Or had it, uh, called in his wife, you know, to come pick up all this gear and those weights and leaders and bait and all of this. And it was at that time when bait was really expensive. It really was. The other tackle shops were charging $5 a pound and we were right at three fifty a pound. Even for us, that, I mean, we were, we were doing it just so we can get it the break-even number and sell our fishing tackle. We were, it was like gasoline. It was just to get you to come into the shop, buy to bait, and, oh, yeah, I need this, I need this. And that's where we would make our money. We didn't even make money on the bait. So, it's crazy, man. It is crazy. Damn it, nice. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it, it's the deal we have to deal with. All this social media platforms, you know. Guys over there just causing hate and discontent. But I don't worry too much about it anymore. Like I said, guys, with with the channel and everybody that we got on here and stuff like that and how we're growing, everybody's definitely learning a new side of us. And, and granted, we have a lot of guys on here that probably hate us, but they're still watching the channel. They're still following along to see what we're saying, but they won't give us a thumbs up, <laughs> which I think is funny. It's all right. No worries. Second batch of 36. Keep it going. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I, I, Lee, I'm in the same boat right now. I got two jet skis out back that are broken down. And I haven't had the time or the money to get them over there to, to get them checked out to get this process started so I can get them back on the water. So I actually, I fell behind on, I was like two months behind on the payments to where they were actually going to repossess them. But I was finally able to get some sales to where actually I could make payments to try to get them back, back on, back online, you know. But right now I'm just making sure the payments are made so that way I can get up there and get those uh, fixed up before they, you know, anything happens. So it happens. It happens. I don't like I'm slurring. Hmm. Oh man! First, it was, it was they hated on me because I was always out there fishing and catching, and then when I stopped fishing and catching, they hated on me because I was no longer there. And you know, I'm too too. Um, <laughs> they say one time that I was too I was too good for them or whatever. That's when so they hated on me on that. And then you know, and I told them it's not that. It's like I'm I'm, I'm working. Like I have to work at the shop to make sure it happens. You know, I got to make sure that, you know, my guys are doing what they're supposed to do, especially when you come back and find out they hadn't been doing anything you were telling them, telling them to do throughout the day, but they want to get paid, you know, come in here and waste my time and then want to get paid. So, yep. There's Billy. Hey, boss, go back up through the comments. There was a post um, and 
we figured you'd be the translator and go check it out for us. And so we didn't, nobody blocked it or anything like that. So it should still be there. Um, and maybe, maybe he'll stay on the channel if he's not being mean, because <laughs> we don't know what it says. So yes, Bassin, by all means, guys, by all means. I mean, like I said, if it's somebody we don't know that's not even participating in their channel, being proactive, you know, commenting with us, I have a problem when they're plugging in their channel. But for you, you you've been coming on, you've been showing support, you've been helping us out. Please, by all means, share share your channel on there, boss, because a lot that's why I designed the channel, because we all need to network. We all can help each other out with knowledge, with fishing, with, you know, hey man, I'm I'm planning eventually, like I said, once I can get the channel to be big enough to where it'll support us a lot better, I'm going to be traveling. Well, guess who I'm going to be visiting? Y'all. I'm going to be visiting y'all. I want to fish with all the guys that have stayed up with me late nights while I'm sitting here working and trying to get this to go. You know what I mean? So, no, by all means, please do. So. Hmm. <laughs> no, I have not shown the pink MXL Raptor yet. <laughs> uh, awesome, Billy. Thank you very much for that. And Billy, what or billion? Sorry, billion. What do you do? What's your channel about? What's up, Timothy? How you doing, boss? <clears throat> Jeez, it's 120 pound flats. <sighs> See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, one, uh, you know, I always hear the, the guys in the horror stories of hooking into these monsters they couldn't turn and this and that. And I'm like, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those kind of challenges and stuff. But again, too, I am, you know, I got I to gotta take care of business first. Once, once I know I can leave this for a week or two and, you know, have whoever's running it, you know, making sure it's being ran the way it's supposed to be run, that I won't have to come back and, you know, have a loss for two weeks, you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Dang it. Yeah, six, six foot seven is my biggest alligator guard so far. But that's the thing too, man. Um, I was actually talking to a customer today and they were talking about how tough the alligator guard fishing is in uh, part of the osa that they go fish at and i was like yeah <laughs> you ain't you ain't joking on that i mean i definitely you know we've caught guard there and stuff like that but you definitely have um problems with uh, doing the hook set and all of that and i saw a post today talking about people letting the alligator guard run for you know so long and you know and that's why they get gut hooked and this and that and you know, I can understand why some guys will do that because they want to try to ensure that they hook that guard. They don't like to miss fish. And because they don't like to miss fish, they let them run for that long, longer period of time. But I tell you what, I've, I've ran, let them run, let them run a long period of time and still did not hook them. So, yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We see it's crazy. Like, you know, as soon as you land one big fish, you, you, there's a target on your back. That or the guys that land one big fish now are experts. Yep. So. <laughs> the, they, they used to make fun. The starter kit for an expert shark fisherman was a. Uh, 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 was that salt life a salt life sticker a uh, you know pin 12 watt and you know j hooks and a surf weight <laughs> that was, 
That means they were an expert once they had the Salt Life sticker and stuff like that on their truck. Oh, man. I did see a video today about um, well, how they do or handle the spoonbill. You know, once they, do, they are going to retain them since they said that they don't have a size limit on them, just um, that they can only keep one. So. No, I did, yeah. Nice. Hmm. Oh yeah, that that's very true right there, Billy. And uh, and it, you know, and it's funny too because the guys that you know are breaking the law, you know, using the wrong baits and stuff like that. Are the ones that are trying to call everybody else out when they're doing the same damn thing. <laughs> um, hmm. <laughs> oh man, all all the time. Oh, I, actually, I had a meme made of me, and it was. Uh, the, uh, it was after I cast it, the Abbott 130 on, on Bob Hall Pier. They, they were saying that if you wanted to cast a 130, you have to call it um, Rico time from uh, the uncle on, uh, what was that? Uh, oh, man, the dude with the curly hair uh, with glasses. And his uncle that wore the blue shirt with the white stripe on it and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Yes. Every fishing, every single fishing that is out there will have some kind of meme about it, you know, just a different perspective and joke about it. So that's for sure. That I, I could definitely say you have more inshore for light tackle, but I grew up on, you know, in the bays of Corpus, uh, I was always using dead bait, you know, catching my own bait and stuff like that, mullet, shrimp, and bottom fishing, not float or lure or anything like that, or boat. All of it was from from the bank. Go. My wife came in to get one shark fish set, but I have no idea where to even start. That's big morning stuff right there. Yep, Aaron, for sure. It is. It is, but you got to look at it this way, boss. You get what you put into it. So you definitely can go small and deal with, uh, you know, fighting a fish a long time. Also, too, when you do catch that fish, is it going to survive? Um, what kind of fishing you plan on doing and especially if you're only getting one when you get cut off are you going to have the extra spools of line to be able to keep fishing that one or are you going to call it quits after that one like this is something that you, you there's a lot of decisions to be made or a lot of questions to ask yourself and then you start kind of filling in the blanks of okay this is what I want to do this is how I want to fish it and before you actually spend any money, I highly recommend going through my channel, looking at our um, fishing videos, our spooling videos, our casting videos. That way it can, even the kayak and drone and all of that, like really do some homework on it. So that way you can figure out which way you want to go. Because um, without getting out there and fishing with these guys, it's going to be real hard for me to say, well, this is what you need. This is the way you would go and like I need a lot more information from you as to what and how you want to do it. So and no, I've never gone noodling and I don't know if I have the uh the canicas for that. So now I'll run a shark bait at night, you know, in big waves by myself, gone for an hour and a half before, you know, anybody will even know that, you know, I'm in trouble or whatever. So yeah. Uh, 
try to sell it fishing would be some baits to catch for big uh, flat corpus. All right, Gypsy Fighter. I like that name because I just saw uh, Pacific Rim the other night. Well, I mean, I saw it when it first came out, but it just, uh, the Gypsy, yep, awesome. What is it, Gypsy Danger or something like that, I think is the name of the, uh, the, uh, uh, God, I already forgot the name. Oh, nope. Hmm. All right, so for well, the flats that I've caught, I caught a. I actually was fishing for Gatsby goose, so that was a very accidental catch. But I landed a thirty-nine inch flat. I was using corn and marshmallows on my my leader, and I was I had three hooks on there. It was my Gatsby goose rig. Or actually, no, I had like five hooks on there. We were trying out different setups for Gatsby goose fishing. Uh, and tilapia rigs, um, but I started using bigger chunks of bait, three-way long um, redfish rigs, and or the Jack Cravels, and actually, third batch right there of 36. Going on my fourth one round. Um, but yeah, using Gasper Goo for, for what I've seen so far, Caught one 39 inch flathead, one 39 inch blue, and both of them came off of using um, chunks of bait, you know, big cut bait, and not even that far off the bank. 20, 30 feet off the bank, and we were catching them that way. So I noticed throughout the night, though, the further I could cast out, the bigger the, the bigger ones that I caught. So. Yes, Lee. I couldn't agree. Fishing does roll. That's for sure. So, so I just said I'd get one similar. Yes. Yeah. For the for the rods, you can make payments on them, but you won't get it till it's fully paid off. Yeah, William, William did a whole fast forward through all the videos as he was sharing the links and stuff like that, too. So, yeah. Nope, I'm not doing any shout outs, guys, because a lot of these names are, you know, asking me to step into t some kind of trouble and I fell for it for a few times but I don't do it anymore so especially if you're just coming in for that and then you're gone <laughs> hmm. Hmm. yeah yep the, the the typhoon uh, mm -hmm. that was a pretty good movie it really was I, I liked it <laughs> he's a Pacific Rim geek nice you can say and um, I think I've seen I want to say I've seen part two that one was all right. That one was all right. It wasn't as good as part one. Part one just, it, it was, it was on. Awesome, Aaron. Well, Aaron, with, with what you're watching, I mean, I know, I know you're going through and, and enjoying it. Don't get me wrong, but if you're looking for something specific, <laughs> Try imp implementing that into your search. And if not, um, comment on a regular video of what you're looking for and stuff like that. And sometimes, sometimes if I have time, 
I, I can find do a quick search on that, you know, pulling it up. But most of the time, if you do a search on our channel, make sure you have Team Hard Life in the search because otherwise it wants to include everybody else from every other channel with that those uh, keywords that you're using. So. Yeah, grow, growing up, it was it was a good series. It was one that we, I mean, like I said, we never had, you know, cable or anything like that. So we always had to wait for the Christmas time frame because that's when they would show the good movies that we could watch on TV. And, yeah, Jaws was always, that, that was just like, we were waiting for that one, waiting for that one to come. That was, yes. <laughs> that she was. Yes, sir. Ooh, 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 ooh. I dropped my uh, my crimpers and almost knocked the whole little tray that I have, you know, a thousand sleeves in. Yep. The blob. Oh, man. That was, yes. Yeah. All right, guys, so since we were talking about the movie Silver the last time, um, who has watched it since we, we were talking about that movie? Or Silver Bullet, sorry, the Silver Bullet. Who has watched the movie The Silver Bullet since we were talking about it the other night? Come on, somebody had to watch it. Somebody had to search it and check it out. It's a horror movie, werewolf movie, but it is... It is awesome. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Y'all really like it, guys. Like I said, it ain't crazy special effects, but it is it is very, very down to earth, very it's cool. It's cool. I like it. I've watched that thing probably a thousand times, and if I'm actually going through YouTube right now and um, going through the video selections in there and stuff like that, because it actually through the YouTube, yes, you, you it cuts out a lot of the cussing and you know some of the the scenes that make them shorter and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, Shogun, I want to say I have, I want to say I have, but. I would have to see the actual like actors list or um, a picture of it. I do have to say that movie, um, The Last Samurai, was definitely a good one as well. Uh, what's the turn time on Rod Builds? Right now, we're three to four weeks out on Rod Builds. And that been probably after this week, it might go to four to five weeks because we've actually been getting more people making more and faster payments on their rods and stuff. So, yep. Uh, let's see. Yep. The last samurai was a really good movie. Definitely. Alive. guys who's also read the last uh, the last ronin of the ninja turtles who grew up on the ninja turtles i know i did and i finally read the the, <laughs> the uh the last ronin and man i'm sorry dad ah uh, no <laughs> Uh, 
All right, Bastion, I have no idea what that last comment is. That one, that one was definitely a pretty cool movie. <laughs> and actually, um, Sergeant Zim's on there. Uh, he actually made, I saw another deal on Facebook or on YouTube when they were talking about like the top five military, you know, uh, drill instructors. And, and that one, he made, you know, part of, part of the top five on there and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. Yeah, so if y'all grew up on the Ninja Turtles, um, the last Ronin is the original authors who created the Ninja Turtles. Um, it's the final comic, uh, or final com comic of the original uh, Ninja Turtles and Splinter, and also Casey Jones, and yeah. So it, it is, it, yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter is a copy of Star Wars. See, and what's crazy is, like, for years, I was into Star Wars. I really was. And Harry Potter, I got introduced to that when I was in the Marine Corps. And we liked it just because the movies were so long, you didn't have to worry about stopping and, you know, going to something else. Like, it would keep you intrigued for a long time. Um, but after a while, it just... I just fell away from Star Wars uh, there because there, it's so many different angles. And I guess I just, you know, kind of fell away from that one. So, see, seeing, uh, I want to know, I want to say I've seen all three of those, but it really wasn't the ones that really intrigued me. Um, <laughs> Uh, the Knight Rider, um, the Hulk, the series were the, the ones who really I really liked. You know, anything that was superhero, obviously the Supermans, the original with uh, Christopher. Uh, oh, man, I'm brain dead right now. K-O-T-M. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Daniel Boom, David Crockett. Remember those? Yes. The Last of the Mohicans. Now that one, that was a movie. That that was epic, epic, epic. Not not the original one, the remake. The original one, I tried to watch it just because I liked the remake, and it was just, yeah, no, that one, that one is awesome, yeah. That's the last one that just came out, correct? For uh, Godzilla? Hmm. Hey, Crocodile Dundee, yes, sir. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> oh man I'm sorry I was thinking about Crocodile Dundee part 2 <laughs> when he went to that party <laughs> oh just checking <laughs> or just making sure <laughs> oh that's crazy There you go. Yeah. That's not annoying. <laughs> oh, yeah. Most definitely on that one. Uh, 
finger is starting to get a little tender right there. <laughs> yeah, I've done a little bit of work since I've started on the channel with y'all. <laughs> Almost, actually, that's my last one of the 36 right there for the fourth package. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say that. Clint Eastwood still, he was still making movies. He made that, uh, what was that, that last one, the, uh, about the vehicle? Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's one, there's two, three, four, four batches of 36 right there. Gran Torino. That was that was an epic. That was an epic movie. Yeah. That and uh, all the police police academies. <laughs> oh man. Yep. Columbo. Yep. Um, MacGyver. <laughs> oh, Gilligan's Island. Yep. Look, clean the boat, or look, boss, the plane. <laughs> eh, well, eh, you can definitely have a lot of fun offshore fishing, that's for sure. But once you go offshore, man, it, it's a whole different monster out there. Red Dawn, man, that the original, that one was awesome. That one was awesome. Now, the remake wasn't too bad either. They really wasn't too bad. You know, it didn't follow the exact same deal, but it was it was nice. Oh, okay. Not the Rockford Files, but uh the uh the X Files. Ooh, that or uh uh the Twilight Zone. <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, no, most out. When you go offshore, it is something else, man. You you get tired and beat up out there. Um, most definitely, come on by if you come in. <laughs> Billy, Billy gets to call somebody younger. Oh man, that that now that's priceless, bro. That is priceless. <laughs> yeah. Come on by, boss. Most definitely. We but definitely give us uh but definitely give us a heads up when you're coming in like that, guys. We we like to try to you know, some people try to surprise us to come in and then I'm out making a delivery or I'm out doing something, you know what I mean? So normally if I know, I try to, to make myself available. But, you know, sometimes they come driving up right when I'm driving out or whatever, you know. <laughs> it does get pretty crazy here and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Man, I, we watched The X-Files for years. That and Unsolved Mysteries, that one was an epic one. That or was it Dial 911? Or nine one one, something like that. <laughs> oh man, that was. <laughs> Making the cable sections for our shark cast out leaders. 
It's a 250-pound coated cable with a 450-pound stainless steel sleeve or swivel, sorry, and I'm double double crimping them. And I have, I'm going on my fifth pack of 36 sleeves or, or swivels. So, yep. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, dude, all of Chuck Norris is like, yeah. Yep, that, that. Yes. I mean, we watched that, uh, what, what is it, uh, where it was, uh, it was either a sheriff or a, uh, a cop. Uh, what's that? Um, God, man, I can't believe it. I could see Texas Ranger. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Walk a Texas Ranger. Yeah, and Charles Bronson. Yes, yeah, sir. I was just talking about that show the other day. Charles Bronson, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bet it does. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> that is too damn funny right there for sure lone wolf mccabe mcquade yep yep mm. <laughs> 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 wow, I did not know that. From Oklahoma, wow. I was, uh, forgot what I was reading. It was something about Bruce Lee and, and Chuck Norris, and they were in, uh, and it was in uh, one of their movies, uh, where Chuck Norris came in and they actually, they, they really did fight in that movie. They, they really did draw blood out of each other. Um, and like, they didn't know whether to, to stop the fight or let them keep going. So they just recorded and left it in the movie. So <laughs> Billy, he'll never be a true Texas Ranger. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. All right, guys. So real quick, Chuck Norris jokes. Come on, let's let's see them. <laughs> this is gonna be good. This is gonna be man. Jacob is missing out. <laughs> mm. Yep, yeah, boy. That's going to be, <laughs> let's see, let's see this go through. And y'all did see the deal, guys, you know, the, the hashtag um, shop, uh, the real deal. Uh, YouTube has got a deal set up where they are going to help, you know, obviously those who do the, the hashtagging where we can make more money and other ways to, to make sales through the YouTube channel, through advertisement and stuff. We just have to do all the hashtags to get it in there. <laughs> Jordan, I did see my truck and now that truck is known as Optimus Prime. <laughs> uh, truck Norris walked into a feminist camp and came out with an iron shirt and a sandwich. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Yeah. There's once made bit by a snake up to the the snake died. Yeah. That that joke was actually told in the uh what movie was that um uh the uh the expendables he told that joke himself <laughs> hashtag number sign same thing 
And actually, it's not number sign. It's also the pound symbol, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> when he gets... <laughs> when, <laughs> that is, that's too funny. That one's good. I was in a lion cage and it started growling. The trainer said to uh, back up. So the lion did. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's see. And, th and th you know, it's funny to know that, you know, he, God, people talk about memes, to have, but have to have jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes using your name. That is, that, that is just above crazy right there. <laughs> yeah. Monster side of the <laughs> Yeah, buddy, that's funny. That is. Uh, yeah, Robert, you have a good one, Bob. Yep, I'm almost, I'm almost done with the fifth bag, right? I've already moved them over so many times, so. But I have the empties in the trash, so. Yep, I'll probably give it another 10, 15 more minutes, guys, and I'll be calling myself. Um, the... Phone will definitely be getting a little tired over here, but again, it's not me. The battery, the battery. So, but again, guys, we're coming up on our twenty-five thousand subscriber mark giveaway, guys. Y'all just heard another prize has has been added with uh, Jacked Up Leatherworks from um, team member. Ooh. I got lost there for a second. Uh, Mr. Carl Moon has donated a some of his winnings from his last fire drawing to the 25,000 subscriber mark giveaway. So, yes, sir, it is awesome. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Now, that one was pretty good. He only has good dreams because he scares away the nightmares. <laughs> Hard life. Hello. Okay. Let's see. If... <laughs> Freddy Krueger doesn't hunt Chuck Norris in his dreams. Chuck Norris hunts him in his nightmares. <laughs> Oh, that is too, that is epic. <laughs> oh. All right, guys, I got six more of these, and I'll be calling it a night with here. But again, guys, I do want to thank everybody for being on the channel. And again, um, this is what it's about, is just sharing a good time, you know, knowledge, fishing, hunting, movies. We There's so many ways to, to build tackle and enjoy ourselves doing it, so. Again, guys, like I said, I'm going to show you all the, the ones that I got the swivels on here in a minute. And definitely, you know, know that I do put in the work for y'all guys. So I do appreciate y'all support and buying our gear and our tackle, knowing that hey, it does it does do right. So, yeah. <laughs> With Chuck Norris. Yeah, I've heard that one right there, that he pushes the world down. <laughs> Oh, guys, thank you. Thank you very much for that. And got three more, and I'll be calling it a night. Um, Aaron, no, our website is down right now, but you can call the shop 361-334-2171 and place your order that way. And actually, that's going to be a lot easier because if you have any questions of what you would like to purchase, we can answer them, as well as, too, when we do the shipping, we can actually combine it because... That was one of the major problems with the website was trying to get the uh, 
the the shipping to be okay you know what i mean it was overcharging everybody and stuff like that and uh it did make it difficult for us to keep sales going through that because of the shipping costs everybody a lot of we had a ton of canceled orders and or we would get with the customer and let them know hey man you overpaid on shipping but we got this and this we could credit you for that so yeah <clears throat> <laughs> right all right uh coda thank you very much from colorado right right on so all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and call it a night but i'm gonna show you all everything i did while i was live with you all there you go those are all the soybeans i did right there i haven't crimped them yet that'll be on an, uh, i don't know if i'll be on another video but yeah there it is guys so, all right, y'all have a good night. We will talk to y'all tomorrow morning. Um, I will be live in the morning. Um, we'll see what, what, what I got going on then. Later, guys. <laughs>